I'm telling you, it's going to happen. Adversity is going to happen. You go to wrestling practice, you're going to sprain your ankle. <coughs> and you got to know how to handle that. I used to say an adversity is, I used to say, I used to have an or in adversity. It says when adversity hits, I would say you take it on or it takes you on. When adversity hit, hits, you take it in or you take, or it takes you on. Well, I don't need that second part in there. I didn't even want to put it in your brain. I don't know why I'm saying it to you. When adversity hits, you take it on. There's no or. That's the bottom line. If you want to move forward, then do what? If you got a choice to be good or bad, then some people are going to be good and some people are going to be bad. But if you got no choice and you're going to be good, that's the way you want to choose your life. And adversity doesn't happen often because through disciplines, preparation, focus, you eliminate it. So if you make the same mistake over and over and over again, if you're in the wrestling room and you're not learning to adjust it, or if you're in the business world and all of a sudden you made a deal and oh my gosh, I went through this about two months ago, I made that same mistake. Wow. You're not really making advances. You gotta make sure you prevent <laughs> adversity. And when it happens once, it doesn't happen again. And then lastly, in leadership, this is really key. This is really important. And this was the re I didn't even know. It. This is the why I could come back to practice. I mean, Coach Stewart puts me through a practice. He kicks my butt from a standpoint of I'm tired, I'm, 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 I'm beat up, I sprained my ankle, got a black eye. I just got the stock market just plunged, whatever. Doesn't matter for me, the stock market can plunge all the way if they want to. I'm still making money, I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> I got it figured out. But I'd like to see it go. Because I'll make more money. But what it was that I was doing for all these years, because of number one, the first thing I said is about being the first one there, the hardest working, the last one to leave. I was always the last guy to leave. But I wasn't just the last guy to leave to be the last guy to leave. I was always doing things that made me feel good. After a practice. What was what do you mean by that? Did you feel like a girlfriend there or what? <laughs> well, I didn't even know what girls were until after the Olympics were over. You gotta keep priorities straight. Now that you could if you wanted, but you might might be consequences. But if you get them on board like the family and profession, it's the same thing. It can be a, it can be a plus. And that's key, that's key. But what it was was I would stay after practice. Work a little bit extra on things because I was always told to, to be the last guy there. So I would work on extra, maybe climb the rope a few more times, maybe do a few more sprints, uh, you know, and so on and so forth. <coughs> but then I, but then I would always put these plastic sweats on, and I really wasn't, you know, I, I was down to weight probably already. But it, I, it learned, it, I, it felt good for me, for some reason. I was just sitting there. Man, this feels good. Now, most people think it wasn't because I was probably drinking water at the same time I was sweating and so on. But what I was doing is recovering. It's called recovery. And by that I mean I was going to get a massage. Um, then, I, then I'd leave there and I'd go out and turn the cold showers on. I'd set in the cold showers, let it beat all over me. Then I, my high school coach, had, they had a, a whirlpool there that he'd set in there. So I'd get it about 107 degrees or so. Jump in that thing. Oh, this feels good, man. Because I just wrestled for two hours in practice. And I, was, I got a pass slip out of study hall, I was doing sprints, I was doing technique all day, just got done doing a ton of rope climbing. Man, this feels good. So then I went to, then I went to, um, uh, as I got older, I, uh, we had, a, a, like at Iowa State, we had steam rooms, we had, we had saunas, we had whirlpools, we had cold plunges, we had massagers, what do we call them, masseuse? Man, that feels good. So I wasn't, you know, I was the last guy out because I was going for an hour straight on stuff that felt good to me. And because of that, while I was slaying there, sometimes other people would start joining me once they saw me kicking a lot of butt. You kind of draw a crowd. It's like Tom Sawyer. 
Anybody heard of Tom Sawyer? That's amazing he's still around. But anyway, all of a sudden, years later, I start coaching, started applying some of these principles to my athletes because I noticed a lot of them just hurried out of practice. They hurried there, hurried there. They were still sweating as they left, left the locker room. And I put all this together. It took me a while. But what I was doing is getting recovery, and I was getting people to do it more than once so they would be together, and they would, have, they would talk, and they would think about what they just took place that day, and they would analyze what they want to do later. They would be using their own thought process, and they were recovering physically and mentally to get ready for the next, what they had to do. So I came back every day ready to go because I was re ready to go. felt good. Nobody else felt that good. And then my teams, they came back quicker than all the other teams out there because they worked really hard. They recovered. Instead of having to have a light day to recover some more, they could re work real hard. So they had a lot of hard work because of just this recovery process. And you don't just need that sport. You need it in business. You need it in life. You need it in family. And like I said, I wore this hat. I get a little recovered just looking at that hat because that's, that's on the lake that I have a cabin on in Minnesota that Chase on the Lake it's called. It's a nice place to go eat. So on and so forth. But... You know, it's just the mind and the body, it's amazing and how it works. I've tried other things and they just don't work that well. Because I got passions and it's, if I don't have a passion, I mean, right when I got done coaching, they wanted to take me to um, politics. And we're right in the heat of politics right now. Wow. It's so different. And I used to actually kind of be a coach for a, a politician. We were different. You know what he told me one day? He said, the day I lose an election, and I start shaking a little bit because I don't like the word lose. I go, oh, because he never lost one. He said, it will be the happiest day of my life. So they tried to, they said, why don't you, we want you to run for the governor here in the state of Iowa. Well, let me, let me see if I, what, I like it. I don't know. So they trained me for a while. So two or three months, they put me in training for to be the governor. I cracked. I broke down. Now I could have handled it. But, but I, still, I still don't have wrestling more. It needs to be. Plus, I just didn't, couldn't get it that way. In fact, they even threw, flew me to Washington, D.C. to meet all these people all during the day. And then I had one more meeting to go. And, you know, I didn't know where I was going to go. Man, these guys are pretty good guys. I like meetings. Maybe I will do this. Maybe I will try this. Go for it. It take me a little time to adjust. Now, but I think after a year, I think I could do it. It could really help. Well, this last meeting, this guy looked at me. And he goes... Coach, I go, yeah. You're done being the coach. I go, what do you mean? He goes, you're only going to be coached from now on. I go, what do you mean? He goes, you're done thinking for yourself. I go, whoa. What do you mean? He goes, we will tell you every move to make. When I walked out of that room, I knew it was not for me. I said, I've done all right with my life so far. Don't you think I can use my own brain? He goes, no. <laughs> so that got me. That was gotta be a special, you know, you've gotta have a passion for that, you gotta be special in that, and you gotta be able to, and I'm sure people develop in that area, but for me, they looked at me that way, and they helped me make a good decision. That guy actually helped me make a good decision. And he, he gets mad at me when I bring his name up and I talk about it because I don't hold back things too much. And you get in a little trouble. You get in a little trouble because somebody will know him or somebody will have a connection. And he'll write, or not just him, or could be all the presidents that I met in, in America. 
you know, over my career. Met a few. Skipped one once. Of course, I met him afterwards. You could meet the president before you could fly to the Olympics in 72. But I didn't want to miss a workout. So I made the hotel room into a wrestling room. Me and the two Peterson brothers trained in that hotel room. Because we knew after the Olympics were over, we could go see him when we won the gold medal. Because that was the situation. So we got to go see him afterwards. But, you know, it's just one of those things, you know, you use, um, you know, you use um, good common sense, hopefully. But anyway, uh, all this really leads to, uh, what about the, guy? the guy's name, by the way, was Carl Rove. You probably heard of him. <laughs> yeah, he helped me a lot. And I wrote him back when he got mad at me, when he said, I didn't say that. Yeah, he did. I got a guy to verify because I had somebody with me. But that's all right. Don't matter. Yeah, he said what he had to say back to me. You know, not going to admit to that. <coughs> think he's going to admit to that? you got to learn to be able to be a pretty good fibber. You know, in that, in that business sometimes. You guys are right in the heat of the battle, too. It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun, but it's a lot of money going around. Anyway, so performance. Uh, this all leads to performance. That's what it's all about. It's about building performance. It's about once you get built, you want to stay there, do it again. And that's where most people don't do it because when you get there and you do it once, you're just so. Wow, like the Packers, you know. Because <laughs> I went in that year, spoke with the Packers right before the season started and they won the Super Bowl. It wasn't just me helping them, but a lot of things helped me. But, you know, it's just, sometimes it's just overwhelming. It's overwhelming. A good friend once told me that when I wanted to get into this investment, <coughs> I said, how do I know if it's a good investment? And the guy looked at me, he said, well, I don't think you look at the investment. I think you look at the people that are presenting and that are associated with the investment. That really helped me. In fact, I, was, I didn't bring my cell phone, which is a mistake, because I usually keep it right in that pocket for danger <coughs> in case something happens. You know, I feel pretty protected today. I've got a lot of wrestlers around me. And smart people, business people. But, uh, uh, you know, it's just some of these things for building performance uh, takes a lot of different things like, like recruiting. You know, it's, it's the people around you are going to help you so much if you believe in them. So I, if I believed in that people that were trying to get me an investment, you know, I probably went with it. A higher chance. And you know what? The one time a guy told me this, wow, am I getting returns? It's unbelievable. For me, I'm a low-key guy on some of this stuff. But it's working. I think they called it fold or something, like how many fold? Because I put this much money into it and then all of a sudden, I'm getting this much money back. And the guy told me the other day, well, that's a 13 fold deal we got for you. That's not bad. I put a dime in it, I get 13 dimes back or whatever it is. That's, you know, that's pretty good. So, anyway, in recruiting, when you recruit, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of funny because uh, I was at Iowa State and I ended up at Iowa. And this guy came after me, two guys came after me. One guy was the coach at Iowa. And he knew right away that no sense in talking to this guy. Because he's not interested in thinking about what he wants to do a year from now. He's just training for the Worlds and Olympic Games. And he's going to be, you know, but he, but he realized who he should talk to. You know, it's kind of like me realizing that I'm not going to talk to my, I'm not going to fall in love with my ass. I'm going to fall in love with probably the, the parents because they, I feel better about the parents than I do about the athletes. But there's got to be some motivation there. So all of a sudden, I've got a coach that quits recruiting me, basically. starts recruiting my mom, my dad, my support systems, my friends. And I'm still training. And it's kind of funny that he all of a sudden 
calls me up one day, about two months into the decision, because I thought I had like six months to make a decision. He goes, what do you think about you still, you're still interested in coming to be our coach? Assistant coach, I said, well, I'm interested, but you know, geez, I'm just training. He goes, take your time, take your time. But he, but he, he had done a lot of homework. He had done a lot of homework. And he knew when to hit me. So the next day I get a phone call, it's him, and I go, what do you call me back for? He goes, take it or leave it. <laughs> Oh, I, he caught me off guard. Yesterday he told me I had months. He said, well, I know. So things changed. Take it or leave. I said, I got to call you right back. So what did I do? Picked up the phone. I called my support groups, my mom, my dad. And guess what? They both said, take it. I didn't know that this guy had been working hard with my mom and dad. But he knew where to work. And that's why I said, well, I've I, I got to call my friends. So I called my best friends. And every one of them told me to take it. And guess what? This guy had been working with all my friends. And I didn't know it. They, in fact, he had planted a guy in Ames that year to work with the coach, Dr. Harold Nichols, in his business outside of wrestling that could give reports every day about what was going on and learning the inside. And so when I, when all of a sudden he found out that I was going to <coughs> Iowa, he didn't even wait. He packed up that next day. He didn't even, he left his furniture, everything in the apartment, and just moved back home. It's crazy. You just don't know what's going on. But if, but if you're smart in business, if you're smart in what you need to do, you know, good things. And then of course, Iowa had this guy named Carver. I don't know if you, people know this guy named Carver. They still got him, but the, the granddaddy was Roy Sr. And he, he came along one day and he kind of pulled me aside and he goes, he was with the coach and he says, don't let lack of jack stand in your way. I didn't know who Jack was. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, so I didn't. I, who the hell is Jack? So anyway, I told my mom that story. My mom called him up and said, "You cannot buy my son." Now shut him up right away. I didn't make the move because of money. Because my mom told me he actually had a check right in his pocket right here that he would write whatever it needed to get me there. But that's not why you go. That's not why you go. Maybe NFL and stuff like that. But, but you know what? That's why they only win one in a row sometimes. There's got to be meaning in there and consistency. And that's why you got to have repeat performance. Once you get repeat performance for a long time, like Iowa Wrestling did for a long time. And the reason why is because once somebody was successful, we worked on that successful person to keep them motivated because otherwise they're going to fall off. Most people just let your champion alone. He's, he's automatic points. Let your top business leader alone. He's done good because he's had this big deal. You've got to keep people motivated, especially after they're successful. And Iowa Wrestling has two-time champions, three-time champions, four-time champions, 23 national championships. And it's because we work on the strong parts. And then they affect the rest of the team. Because they look at those people as leaders and they see it's all worth it. But if you have a leader fall off in a hurry, then it's not must not be that very important. So you gotta work on your strengths a lot. And even though you need to be able to bring that bottom part up, they will come up when they have enough people around them that are motivated and working hard, whether it be business or athletics or and, and both. Staying current is very important in your, in your area, staying current. For me, I just got back from the Olympic Games, my ninth Olympic game in wrestling. And I was there for two weeks. I watched 16 sessions of, of wrestling at the highest level of wrestling. I took my wife along, <coughs> my, my youngest daughter, 
They watched three or four sessions, but they went to track and field. They went to um, who's the guy? Harry Potter or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but who is? But anyway, he won some. He had something going through a wall. Or I don't know what the hell it was, but they loved it. They loved it. Harry Potter. They went to some palace, Buckingham Palace. I don't know. And you know, I went to Paris on a train and saw some tower. I didn't do that, but they knew I loved what I was doing, and they were loving what they were doing. And we got together every day. So, you know, it's it's pretty interesting that um, you've got to you stay current. But anyway, staying current means you know your subjects, which. If you're a wrestling coach, you better know your team. And if this is my team right here, I better know you well enough to make sure I not just treat you as a team, but I make good decisions for every one of you away from the team. Because all of you flow with a different two. And if I can get the best out of each one of you, I'm going to have a good team. And that's important for some of you leaders in the future. And if you think, if you think not, that's, you're missing the boat. Takes a little more time. Takes a little more time. But you also got to know your subject. And I already talked about that 10,000 hours. But I don't know where my hours are right now because that was 1967. Uh, <laughs> and I haven't let up. So I probably got a few more hours. A few more hours on my on my on my wrestling information. So every once in a while, you could have a, what's called a record performance, uh, like in the Olympics. It's pretty easy in sport. Sport is like you go three world championships, three years, then you got an Olympic games. You kind of peak, and that's kind of a, a special occasion. It just so happens, my record performance was my last collegiate year in coaching. And that's unbelievable because I was supposed to take second place that year, and that's a hell of a thing for me to say, going on second place. But for some reason, we had a record performance. Two Big Ten champions, two weeks before the national championships, five national champions two weeks later. Wow. All it is is small adjustments for performance once you get to a certain level. Small adjustments, you've got to make the right ones. Two Big Ten, ten champions out of 11 teams, five U.S. champions out of 109 teams at that time. In two weeks period. You don't think the mind has something to do with, with, with uh, performance once you get to a certain level? It definitely does. So anyway, let's kind of wind down here. I, can, I want you to know that I can talk forever. <laughs> they hire me to find out who it's going to be the great leaders of the future. This one company hired me. They put 25 people in their room that were the potential leaders. They made me talk for four straight hours. Because they knew I could. And they then based their leaders on who got antsy. They watched them in cameras. And they wanted to see who really was going to be able to sustain that effort. They had to come back for four straight years. They picked 25 guys every year to them and paid me good. But four hours is yeah, pretty good with speech, pretty long, pretty tough, tough to keep you there. Almost, all of a sudden, you almost see people like holding their crotch or, you know. <laughs> there's, there's reasons, you know, for that. And that's because they got to go to the bathroom. So crazy things happen. And sometimes you hear tinkles. And Bottles go on, you know. It's just, it's pretty amazing. And they wouldn't let nobody leave. But uh, they, they, they found their leaders. They found their, their leaders. So anyway, this vision of the future is something that, uh, something that you, you have to do. Because if you don't see it, or the more clear you see it, the easier it is to get there as far as the right path and all that types of things.